and AIDS aren't all created equally. They're been passed or raised. AIDS is a different than just the fact that it's on AIDS. So you kind of want to be vigilant where you get your AIDS from, which is the, the ADLs are C behind the either omega 6s or omega 3s, depending on which direction you go. Um, then for lunch, you know, I'll usually have like either a salad with meat, vegetables, and meat, just anything, meat and vegetables. And I try to make vegetables at, at every meal. And then dinner, the same, more of the same, just fish, you know, chicken, meat, vegetables. My wife actually um, has gotten really into cooking and finding a few paleo recipes. If you Google paleo in front of any, any of your favorite foods, like there are any recipes you want to cook, there's something out there for it. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty fun. I don't know if you want to kind of talk about like your experience with it. Well, um for those who don't know Brian, he used to do a lot of, he used to try a lot of the fad diets. And before, he, he used to eat just uh, whole grain rice with ground turkey. And, did you do this or, I don't know. But he used to eat that every single day. For every like, meal. He made that every <laughs> single day, every meal, he would eat that. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so boring. And it literally tasted like cardboard. And yeah, it, it just didn't appeal to me in any way, but I tried to eat it because he told me it was healthy. So, <laughs> um, so ever since this whole paleo thing, you know, I was like a little skeptical because I'm like, well, that's it sounds very limiting. And I'm like, okay, you know, you made me try your your uh, whole brain thing for a while, and that didn't taste very good. But um, a few months in, you know, you kind of get to experiment a lot with with paleo because there's actually a lot of different blogs out there that have recipes that you can try out and literally like you said if you type in on google um, whatever recipe you want to find and type in paleo right in front of it there's actually a lot of different things that come up for it so it's not as limiting as you think and um, i i uh, appreciate paleo because you can actually put in the spices that you want you know like all these er different types of herbs you can really experiment with it and as like as a woman <laughs> I know that guys can eat the same thing every day, but for like a lot of the women, you know, we get bored with it. We want something new, so paleo allows me to, you know, check out different recipes and try different things. So I really appreciate that about paleo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned a lot about uh, fruits and vegetables. What about public fruits? Is there any other fruits? So that's another debatable, I guess, topic, and it kind of dives into our, our next bullet point of, like, depending on what your goals are. So fruit is definitely nutritionally dense, much better than, say, eating bread or, or pasta or any of that, but it does spike your insulin. So depending on what your goals are, if you, if you, want, if you have fat loss and weight loss goals, it would be best to cut her off completely for 30 days. Really? Yeah. Really? And there's better well, there's, fruits, right? So. You want to look at the glycemic index and how much they spike your insulin. And so take bananas versus maybe berries. Bananas are, are super high in the glycemic index. It's, you know, it's more and more sugar. It does. Well, there's better ways to get that potassium <coughs> without the, the insulin spikes because it's just like eating sugar. So berries, berries would be your better alternatives for fruit than, say, bananas. Um, <clears throat> coconut water, if you want coconut water, that actually has much more potassium than bananas do. It doesn't spike your insulin as much. So, in, like I said, fruit is very healthy. Um, it was more, I, I would say, you know, in evolutionary terms, it was more of a treat than it was a staple of the diet. So, meat and vegetables is really a staple. Fruit is just not a treat. You know, same as like maybe dark chocolate or something. It's, it's equivalent. You can have it once in a while, but if you have weight loss goals, and you really want to hit those goals, it's best that you avoid the food type of spike yeah. um, so so All right. So typical day of what I eat, like I said, I'll have the vegetable juice and then I'll have the, the eggs for breakfast. Um, I kind of did go through this. Just salads with meat maybe nuts within the salad or vegetables and, and meat for dinner. There's so many different variations. You know, people say I miss my pasta. So you can do spaghetti squash as your pasta. It turns on amazing. And then you can 
also make zucchini pasta. So there's recipes for that. She, uh, she used to love eating rice with all the meals. So we found a way to make recipes for cauliflower rice. And it, you can make all type of different variations of that, but we eat that quite often as it, it just kind of does the trick in terms of filling that void. Um, so you just got to get creative and kind of have fun with it and experiment. And some things might taste horrible, some might be really good, but you'll learn by experimenting what you like and what you don't like. Um, and you know, with the, the goal in mind, if you have a goal in mind, you know that like these foods are helping you to lead you towards that goal, whereas if you're to, to, to eat pasta or bread, you know, it's going to take you away from what you're trying to accomplish. The other big question is what about alcohol? So, is alcohol paleo? Probably not in the, uh, the literal sense of the word, but like, there's better alternatives as well. So like red wine would be an alternative or one option for you as well as tequila, could be plant-based. Um, you know, vodka is made from potatoes for the most part. Um, there are different types of vodka, so Ciroc made from grapes. That, that would be a better alternative if you actually have to have a nightcap or vodka. Um, tequila is definitely the best option, like tequila maybe and soda. What if you had a better experience once? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, leading into that, it, it goes back into the insulin and inflammation. If you take like a, a whiskey, for example, that's made from grains and corn, wheat and corn basically, so that causes inflammation. And depending on what you drink it with, it's going to spike your insulin because it's, it's, it's what it is, blood sugar. Um, or vodka cranberry, you know, you think the cranberry is healthy, but it's loaded with sugar, so it spikes your insulin. So it kind of falls back in. It, it, you kind of just take a look at what am I putting into my body? Does it cause inflammation? And it, does it cause my, my blood sugar to rise up or my insulin levels to rise up? Pretty much buying a vegetable or like the, um, the root vegetables are more root vegetables spike your insulin more. <clears throat> They're nutritious, but again, it, it depends on what your goals are. If you just want to be healthy, you know, definitely include them. Um, if you have weight loss goals and, and you really want to hit those goals, I'd limit to, limit them along with your fruits. Um, and even nuts, for the most part. There's better nuts than others, so walnuts are probably at the top of the list in terms of um, they're very high omega 3s. And almonds and cashews, and they're a little higher omega 6s. So. And peanuts are nuts. <coughs> peanuts are nuts, they're, they're legumes, and mm. most people don't know that, so it's kind of interesting. Um, and I guess, you know, in the video we kind of went through why does the, the doc, my doctor or the government tell me this? It's just, there's a lot, you know, that's tied into it with big agriculture, big, big pharmaceutical companies, um, these huge corporations that are lobbying you know, in Washington that are trying to keep their profits basically at the expense of everyone's health. So, so they can fly back and forth. Um, I think the more you know and more you're educated, uh, the better off you and your families will be. So, I mean, that's, that's really the, the high-level, basic overview. Um, I'm always here, so if you have any questions, Steve can pass out my email if you, you, know, if you want to email me right throughout the day. Oh, yeah. And then the blog, it has all of the, the supporting articles and a lot of different things on there, so I'll write that down. And so we're accept, expected to keep a food journal as well? Yeah, so we'll go into the details of, of the 30-day the challenge. You, you don't have to, but what I like about it, it, it forces you to be accountable. And it really makes you aware of what you put in your body. So. Yeah. Um, so what are the next steps? So, you know, I go back and forth between being very strict and, and not as strict. I'm probably a little crazier than, than anybody is about the diet just because I, you know, it's just amazing how good I feel now compared to last year, I'm just saying. Um, but when I do cheat, I'll be gluten free. So if you go back to the two eyes, gluten is what causes inflammation. Definitely still, the, the pizza, like say you go for a gluten free pizza, it'll cause your insulin to, to spike but it doesn't cause inflammation. So it's kind of like, you know, at least you're 
Lesser of the two evils. Lesser of the two evils, right. Um, we have a good uh, gluten-free pizza place that we run. Sometimes there is gluten-free pizza. There's, even there's Dom gluten-free Dom a lot has gluten -free pizza. Yeah. I mean, there's gluten-free everywhere. So if you're in a pinch, and if you, you, know, if you don't want to eat just meat and vegetables, the better option would be gluten-free. For the, uh, the purpose of the challenge, that would be cheating. <laughs> right, right. After 30 days, it's, it's you know, I, I think it's fine to incorporate it once in a while, as long as it's not a, a staple of your diet. So, And you'll feel it. I mean, you'll, you'll feel the difference when you eat, you know, pizza for the first time after a month. You'll feel horrible. So, yeah. But then, you know, you become conditioned to that as well. So the more you cheat, the more likely you're going to cheat in the future. It's just, it's a bad cycle. Um, so f for the challenge, I think we had some benchmark workouts specifically, and then we're going to do uh, the food journal, and we'll put the, the details, I don't know if we can email the details. Yeah, yeah, we'll email them. Sure. So you're going to start out, basically, with each week, you're going to start out with 35 points, and then every cheat meal within that week, you're going to be deduct deducted 5 points. So it kind of makes it fun, um, like I said, the journal holds you accountable. You're very aware of what you're putting in your body. You can look back and see you know, where you cheated. Or you can kind of go through that journal and see, you know, write down how you feel. And kind of keep track of that. You can go back and say, well, you know, I felt great here. Maybe it's because I was eating, you know, very strict. I didn't feel that great in these two days. It's probably because I cheated. And you can kind of go back and see that. Why do you keep satiated throughout the day? I know there's like a, an issue for the people who just started. Yeah. So fats, good fats, um, avocados, um, some nuts, like I said, you have to kind of be careful how much and, and what nuts that you're going to be taking, but walnuts are the, the, better, the best option out of all the nuts, they're higher than omega threes, um, but fats and, and protein are really what keep you full longer. Um, once you actually get into a groove and your body's adjusted, you can skip a meal completely and not, not really hungry at all. Um, whereas if you're eating carbs, your body is looking for that quick you know, source of energy every time. So you're starving, it feels like you're hungry like, you know, all the time. Um, so you know, I would just say, eat foods higher in fats, but good fats. Grass-fed meats, salmon, uh, all wild-caught fish would be a good option. Avocados and good nuts. <coughs> um, and then oils, so stick with like olive oil. Coconut oil and stay away from maybe canola and vegetable oil for cooking. And also all the requirements for this challenge are going to be on the website. We have to go and look at that. Yeah. Oh. So I'll uh, I'm going to post the video of today so everybody can see it, and I'll post you know the details of the challenge. Okay. Yeah. And when we start, when, when we're starting? Um, all November is basically. Oh. Uh, yeah. So we can do Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, so you gotta, you, you know, we just wanted to make sure you guys had some, you know, a little bit, yeah, to get it in, you know, and then yeah. that'll give you time to prepare too, so you can kind of, you know, get a game plan and then, you know, rock it out. Right, yeah. yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy while you can. <laughs> cool. Does anybody else have any questions? I know nothing, you know, if, if, if it doesn't pop up now, like I said, um, you can email Steve, John, you can email me, you know, anytime throughout the day. If you're, if you're at a restaurant, you want to go to eat, you can, you know, I'll, I can even give you my phone number, just text me. <laughs> I, you know, I know, I know in the beginning it's very difficult if you haven't done it before, so I've helped a lot of people kind of through it. They kind of say I'm like their little angel on their right. shoulder when they're at a restaurant. They're like, well, what, what would Ryan do? They feel guilty when they, when they so get bracelets, what would Brian do? Yeah. <laughs> right. I got him a whistle. A whistle? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, for the, the sake of the challenge, if you really do give it 30 days, you're going to get the, the full benefits of how you're supposed to feel. And you'll perform better. Um, you'll definitely look better towards the, I mean, 30 days is tough to make a, a dramatic change in the way you look, but you're going to start to see the, the benefits from it within that 30 days. Yeah, I actually really recommend reading the first post of his blog because it really highlights, you know, his progress. And it shows on um, some of the before and during and after pictures, which is an eye-opener. What's the website? Oh, I put it right up here. here the CrossFit Paleo Paradigm. Yeah, go ahead. Take care.
Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, so I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Brian. Pop this up here. So the uh Okay. Is it? There's actually I gotta give you some oh Right. I recommend if you want something for beef jerky, um, it's called Primal Cats. Yeah. It's amazing. They're very they're, they're good. Like, and they're free shipping right now. Yeah. So order a lot of them. This is nasty. But there's no good. There's no good. There's no good. There's no good.